Hello, I am Dread. In today's video, we'll be showing you how to use Voice Meter Banana and VBAN to do audio over Ethernet in a two PC streaming setup. Stay tuned. All right, so listed above me, these two windows up there and right here are the uh, Voice Meter Banana and VBAN windows for the streaming PC. Over here and over up there are the Voice Meter Banana and VBAN windows for the gaming PC. As you can see, we're looking at the gaming PC's desktop, and then behind me, just right here, is actually uh, Spotify on the gaming PC's um, desktop that is currently playing. So that is the audio that you're hearing in the background. So, what this all does is this allows you to actually utilize a two PC streaming setup without actually requiring the use of a mixer board or an XLR microphone. Um, the things you will need are ethernet cables, because they need to be networked to each other, if not on the same network of some sort. And you need the voice meter banana application. The application is donationware, and so basically what that means is it's, it's pretty much freeware, but they, they would like you to donate if you possibly could. Um, so there is that. Um, I would recommend doing it because I like the application, and I use it all the time, and I've been using this setup for, I don't know, a couple months now. I used Voice Meter Banana previously before I got to a two PC streaming setup, and I had a blast with using it, and now it's just made my life even a lot easier by doing this as well. So first things first, what we're going to go over to is we're going to go over to the gaming PC. I'm turning to the side because that's the where my monitors are, and uh, you can see my mouse moving around. And you can see that I'm using my Logitech G930 USB headset. And uh, this is the board to like control it and up and down and so, on and so forth. And if I don't want the stream to hear me, I can actually away and then this brings it right back. And that's pretty cool considering it's two different PCs. And I'm using the Avermedia capture card to actually record um, the uh, view from the uh, um, gaming PC. And then this level right here, as you can see, this is Spotify, and it's actually a virtual cable that is being used. Um, so there's that. And uh, bringing this up or down will increase or decrease the volume. Again, if I want to make it so it can no longer be heard by the stream at all, I can hit that button, and the stream can no longer hear it, but I can still hear it in my headphones. And the reason behind that is because of the layout and how this thing works, all right? So you got, you got three input channels. These input channels are basically anything from a virtual input to a hardware input. Then you have two virtual inputs right here, desktop and alerts. Then you have A1, 2, and 3, which is actually your hardware outs. So something like a USB headset or desktop speakers or a surround sound system or something like that will be used as the three hardwares. Which is really nice because Windows only allows you to actually output to one hardware device by default. This allows you to do three. And then uh, the main master section is all the uh, levels for everything. Um, your physical and uh, virtual layout. So if I wanted to decrease the volume on something independently, so if I just wanted to decrease the volume for everything going to my USB headset, I would then bring down uh, A2 so I wouldn't hear anything at all. Um, so there's that. And then same thing I could do instead of actually independently um, bringing the levels up and down for the headset and Spotify, I can then bring the levels down for B1. So there you go. That's that's a little bit of an overview and layout in terms of how it works. There are plenty of YouTube videos that explain Voice Meter Banana, how to set it up, how to get it working and stuff like that. So I'm not going to go through all that stuff. I was just simply giving an overview as to what's where. And that's about it. And then same thing, uh, switching over to the one right above me, that is the streaming PC window. As you can see, you got uh, VBAN and then you got main. And then the, the hardware out is a USB audio device. This hardware out on this machine is only for testing purposes. That's just to make sure that the audio sounds correct and the audio is working. There is a, a, another prerequisite for this, and that is that your audio on both machines, on every device, has to be on the same sample rate. So you want to make sure that everything's at 44 hertz. Or 44 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz, 96 kilohertz, or whatever the case is. Um, as you could probably see, there are some areas where I don't actually have the 96, 98, or whichever. And that's mainly because what I did do, um, going back over to the uh, gaming PC, 
if I look at my playback devices and I go into one of my devi devices, it's at 48 kilohertz and uh, so on and so forth. So every device that I have is set to 48 kilohertz except for um, my recording on my microphone because that one I cannot change, which is kind of lame, but it happens. Though, if you look at the V-band windows, either one up there, which is the um, streaming V-band for the streaming PC, or the one over there, which is the gaming PC V-band, you can see that they're all at 96 kilohertz. And that's because for through magic of voice meter banana, I'm simply gonna say magic because I'm not an, an audio technician by any means. It uh, takes the 48 kilohertz and converts it or upscales it or does something special with it to make it 96 kilohertz and sounds beautiful. Um, the only limitation to voice meter banana that I know of in terms of audio is it cannot do 24 bit. It can only do 16 bit audio at this time. But I don't know, sounds good to me, is how I look at it. Um, there's also a voice modulation and stuff like that you can do with Voice Meter Banana if you really want to, but uh, that's, again, up to you and how you want to play with it. Uh, what else is there that I could test? Oh, so a lot of people run into the issue that if they use a USB headset, they, can, they have to plug it into their gaming PC. And the problem with that is that if you have OBS on the streaming PC, then you cannot hear the alerts and anything else that may come out in terms of audio from the actual streaming PC. Um, there's a couple ways to alleviate that, and one, one way is putting everything that is stream related other than OBS on your um, gaming PC, which then kind of defeats the purpose because you're not really sharing the load as well. The other way is actually using the same technology to then send another channel or another lane, however you want to call it, uh, back to the uh, gaming PC. But then you learn about the, ins the issue or the question of how do you prevent looping? Because audio looping is a big problem and it creates a lot of... Ugh. And... I mean, there is a, there is a benefit to having the, uh, the actual hardware cables because it's easier to trace, it's easier to follow. This is all virtual cabling because all it is is all this is passing through an Ethernet cable. Um, one, you get severe good quality audio because you have a gigabit transfer rate um, and two you have all these different channels you can use within one cable so it creates a lot less cable management hiccups and so on and so forth but uh, let's I digress let's get back to this and so going into the VBAN portion uh, the first one we'll look at is the gaming PCs VBAN so this is the one that I'm moving the mouse around as you can see. You can see my IP address, the dot .199. As you can see, the 192.168 means it's on the local area network or LAN. And this is by no means going out to the internet. This could be used as an internet solution. This could be used in many other solutions other than a two PC streaming setup. But that is really up to you and what you want to do with it. I'm just giving you the tools to play. All right, so you can see the lines that are on. You can see incoming streams and outgoing streams. So line, the first line that's on is the incoming stream. And it says alerts. This is a customized name just for reference points. The IP address dot 15 is the second NIC on my streaming PC. And then the port is default. And you can see that, you know, bit format, the channels and the sample rate. And the net quality is pretty much how quickly you want it to send out, How how, much bandwidth you want to use so I, I put it up to the max as much as I can to be good with that um, one thing to keep in note is your errors you do not want to see gradually increasing errors because if that's the case then something is not correct and what I mean by something is that either your bit rates are not all the same in terms of the sample rate or there is something else that is completely not correct in terms of your hardware uh, output selection and what I mean by hardware output selection if you see here, I'm using USB audio device. I can use the uh, G930 headset using the WDM drivers, but for some reason that doesn't send over the uh, V-band very well. So I so I use the uh, audio USB audio device. Um, so that's again, I don't know the exact detail as to why that is. It's just what I've found to work, um, and so that is coming in. So that's audio coming to us, and then the outgoing stream. As you, it's set, selecting bus B1, so like I was showing earlier when I was playing with the audio levels and stuff like that on B1. B1 is the virtual audio output 
that I'm sending over to dot 15 which again is the streaming PC and then I can then go over to my streaming PC and I can look at the VBAN on here and you can see I have two IP addresses dot 15 and dot 14 that's because I have two NICs in this machine and uh, it has an incoming stream Spotify desktop microphone that's that stands for from 199 which as we saw before is the uh, gaming PC the quality is set to fast because for some reason with the dual NICs if I use optimal it starts to throw errors so if I it starts to go wonky and the quality really does not sound good. Get back to fast to, to get rid of those errors. All right. And that's, uh, again, I don't know exactly the full details of that. It's just what I've found out to work. Um, outgoing streams, I have selected bus B2 and this is the alerts. And what I mean by alerts is like Twitch alerts. So follow notification, donation notification, subscribe notification, uh, host notification, whatever you have for your stream. And then that's being sent over to the uh, gaming PC again with that IP address. So now we go over to the main voice meter banana window on the um, streaming PC. And as you can see, this lane, which is VBAN 1, is going out to A1, which is hardware audio 1, which is the USB audio devo device or headset that I have connected to the streaming PC. And then the B1, which is the first virtual device, so that is actually being sent out as the microphone in OBS. And then you go down here to main, this is a B2, so B2 is um, the second virtual um, output, and that is going into the desktop portion of OBS. Like if you go into OBS and you have, using the older OBS you have the one mic channel and you have the one desktop channel, so those are those how those are laid out. B1 is your mic channel, B2 is your um, desktop channel, is how I have it laid out on this setup. And so what this allows me to do is not only send my audio from the gaming PC to the streaming PC, but with also this setup and the, that second incoming stream, I can then go over to my uh, gaming PC on twitchalerts.com and I can hit the uh, test follow alert. Right. And then you can see it come up down there. Stronger. And I can hear it in my headset, which is actually plugged into my gaming PC. So I think that's uh, mainly it. That, uh, that explains, I think, most of this, and it also showcases how it all comes around. And again, this requires no extra cables. I mean, other than your headset mic combination that you already have, your Ethernet cables that you already use, or your speakers that you already plug in, there's no extras. The other great thing about this is if you ever have someone coming over that is, I've had this happen a couple times where viewers come over in my stream and they'll sit right next to me so they can watch the stream, see all behind the scenes and see it, how it works and all, all that cool stuff. Um, when doing that, it's nice to have the ability to send the audio through your headset so you can hear what's going on and then through, this, through your speakers of your desktop so that people around you that are here can hear what's going on without needing a second set of headsets or so on and so forth. So I, I like that experience. And then the other great thing is having the ability to do a noise gate built into voice meter and the, also the ability to do compression and you can do all kinds of changes with your voice and so on and so forth. It's, it's very, very nice. I definitely recommend you try it out, check it out and uh, have fun with it. Um, I think that's about all I got. If you have any questions or comments, please feel, feel free to put them below. If you like the video, cool. If you don't like the video, well, shit happens. Let me know what you didn't like, and I'll see what I can do to try and improve it. Um, I just pretty much slapped this together in OBS and got this done. I've been pretty lacking on getting this one out, but uh, hopefully this will take care of a lot of issues. I'm still working on the, uh, the other video that I have to get up, which is... Um, there is a OBS video that I have for the old OBS that I use an auto hotkey script to do scene transitions. Uh, I, have, I have a working model for OBS multi-platform, but, but at this point I cannot do it from the gaming PC, I can only do it from the streaming PC. Um, so I will try and get that video together and the updated script as soon as I get a chance to. Alright, and thank you all for tuning in, and uh, have a wonderful evening.